So on week two, our topic is principles for environmental management. And I'm going to use a particular framework uh, for this discussion, which is called ecosystem-based management. It really is the broader way that we look at it, and it's become the modern construct for environmental management. Difficult to do, but it provides some sound advice and principles uh, by which to uh, uh, think about as science contributing to environmental management. I'm going to for explore four key elements of ecosystem-based management, integration, adaptation, precaution, and sustainability. You'll learn more about those. And the, there are readings that I've uh, provided as required readings, the ones listed here, but also in the Moodle site, there's uh, addition, additional readings that if you want to dive more deeply in the background, you can find out more about uh, these issues uh, on your own. So uh, now conventionally, we manage things one at a time. So in a natural resources department, we might have a group that works on forest and on forest management, on wildlife, and on fisheries. And within fisheries, folks and people thinking about managing oysters, striped bass, um, blue crabs, uh, menhaden, and the like. And yet these things all interact, uh, you know, in food chains. Uh, also with respect to uh, the environmental the protection uh, department, uh, there, there's typically an air quality group, a water quality group, a solids group, uh, and then even within the water quality, those that looked at nutrient issues and, uh, and as well, or toxic issues, for example. And then like in Maryland, we have a land use planning agency that works on the spatial use of land from urban transportation systems, agriculture, and so on. So this is our conventional worldview. So what this uh, ecosystem-based management approach allows us to do is to gradually build on the evolution of integration. So we now manage, try to manage uh, these fishery resources in multi-species management, uh, managing the effects of uh, menhaden harvest on striped bass, for example. And then also in fisheries, we've moved to what is now called ecosystem-based fisheries management, looking at not only the fish stocks and their interactions, but looking at it more widely uh, being affected by what goes on in land or what goes on in the water with respect to nutrients, toxics, and so on. So ecosystem-based management is a framework in which we can look and evaluate these things all together. It is an integrated management approach that recognizes the full array of interactions within an ecosystem, including, very importantly, including humans, rather than considering single issues species or ecosystem services in isolation. So a more detailed definition is one derived by a paper that we have as the required reading long at all. And they took uh, the broader literature, uh, scores of papers at, that discussed ecosystem-based management and kind of sorted through what they, most of them felt was the essential elements or the components of ecosystem-based management. And I won't go through this all. You have the reading. You can explore this yourself. But I've underlined uh, key words here. Uh, some of these uh, parts of the definition, like developing scientific knowledge and using scientific knowledge or effective monitoring or, let's see, um, stakeholder involvement or really processes that, that are really important. But I want to talk about is the principles that we need to take keep in mind. The first, and it's demonstrated here by the underlined word interdisciplinarity, but also down here is integra in, integrated, is just that, integration across disciplines, uh, but across from users uh, uh, and sectors and media and the like. We'll be looking at that moment in a short time. Uh, also, ways that deal with uncertainties, how we should take precaution before moving ahead, what do we need to know, what kind of confidence that we need to have, uh, how do we, even when we don't know enough, how can we make sure that we're being adaptive as we learn more by doing, and then to achieve sustainable uh, solutions. So those are the four principles we'll discuss, integration, sustainability, precaution, and adaptation. Uh, this notion of ecosystem-based management has now been incorporated in a number of uh, uh, government uh, management policies, and, and particularly the National Ocean Policy that was developed during the Obama administration. Uh, and uh, it uh, is a key element of, uh, of managing uh, our nation's environments. 
So again, these four elements, and I just want to show you some things that we'll be exploring in greater detail here uh, under these. Under integration, we'll be talking about this emerging idea of ecosystem services, of integrating how the environment works and how it affects humans in particular. Uh, spatial planning, how do we talk about the multiple uses in par parts of the ecosystem on a spatially integrated uh, framework. Adaptation, this notion of adaptive management, uh, how do we get better, learn by doing, and make our management outcomes more effective. And uh, the precautionary principle under precaution and uh, resilience, uh, a, a particular interestingly interesting component of, of sustainability. So integration. We can look at integration across disciplines, as the definition suggested, so that a biologist needs to work with a chemist and a physicist and maybe even a sociologist. Uh, we could also look at it with respect to the media. So and, uh, air, land, and water all interact. We know that particularly from the Chesapeake Bay region where we have things that come in from the air, go down through the landscape, uh, and affect uh, waters, both running waters and, and coastal ocean waters. So integrating across that bo those boundaries are often very difficult because the, the professional groups are often divided by those media. Uh, ecosystemic, how do we make the, bring this all together within a concept of how the ecosystem works? Intersectoral, among user groups, uh, recreational fishermen versus sport fishermen, uh, those interested in, in conservation of diversity against the, the fishermen. Um, uh, all of those kinds of uh, complexities that we have to work on finding in, uh, solutions that integrate among those users. And then finally, in, intergovernmental. What's the role of the national government, the state government, the local governments in making this all, uh, all happen? This concept of ecosystem services uh, is, is uh, uh, now been around a, a number of years and been used as a concept, and in some cases in a, in a very good practical sense as well. So what it does is that it links uh, the ecosystems that support us with uh, what we gain from them in terms of our security, in terms of our basic material for a good life, our health, and our social relationships. So the concept of these ecosystem services, and you can read more, more about it in the readings, uh, but there are some that are supporting you know, waste removal, disposal, uh, nutrient cycling that support the, basically the, the, the you know, the, the uh, um, uh, processes on which we depend. Provisioning, things that we directly draw, food, fresh water, wood and fiber, fuel, those sort of things are, are services that are provided to us by ecosystems. Things that regulate our environment, you know, climate regulation is the key and obvious one, but also how ecosystems affect floods and regulate that, disease, water purification and the like, and then cultural uh, services that are provided as well. So this is one way that we can think of how we can couple uh, the, uh, the natural parts of the ecosystems and the functions that we have with the human well-being and also helps us understand more of the conflicts uh, here. So you can see here the, this, this, this graph that shows you the potential for mediation of these socioeconomic factors rated by high, medium, low. Don't have time to go into great depth on ecosystem services. It's a very large volume of literature. But the point I want to make is that this is a component of integration within ecosystem-based management. Another is spatial planning. Uh, we have, uh, uh, there's a lot of interest. It's been pushed back through the political a special interest, uh, but there's been a lot of interest in spatially planning the coastal ocean. So we can look here in our uh, coast of the northeast uh, U.S. This is Cape Cod here and up here, and this is a way to kind of overlay lobster management zones, uh, ship, uh, re mandatory ship reporting for uh, safe passage because of the you know, impacts on whales, uh, right whale habitat. So this one's specifically designed to assess some pretty some critical issues with respect to marine mammals in this case. But you can see if these it's a typical GIS approach where we overlay these various sectors in order to understand the conflicts and how we might resolve them. Again, another example of how we can integrate 
that principled integration with an ecosystem-based management. One of them, for example, uh, of this conservation, you, you, you might uh, be aware of this issue of marine protected areas or sanctuaries is one aspect of, of, a, of a spatial designation uh, for conservation, just as an example. So uh, we've covered, again, the broader concept of ecosystem-based management, and we've explored uh, the issue of integration and given you a couple of examples, both with respect to uh, spatial planning as well as ecosystem services. In part two of this, uh, of this lecture, uh, the next video, we'll talk about the remaining three uh, principles that we laid out.